Hello, hello. We are going to talk about now the ways that I I know of. Oh, I just got chills talking about it. Um, it's chilly outside today too. We're going to talk about dimethyltryptyline, which is actually natural in the human body. We're going to talk about ways to decalcify the pineal gland to connect and heal our spirit and and spiritual contact with, with the divine, the, the spirit in us. So we have been uh, tricked most of our lives, especially if we're here in the Americas, in the Western world. Um, but there are many nations that do not put fluoride in their water. So we're going to talk about, I've got this one, it's the learningmind.com. I'll put links in it when I'm done below, but I'm going to read for um, nutrition for the mind's eye, foods to reactivate your pineal gland, your pineal, pineal, your, your contact with the divine Christ consciousness awakened in many Without uh, even really trying, people who don't drink tap water automatically don't have that fluoride. There are people who have broken free from this a long time ago. I denied a fluoride treatment at the dentist this year. I'm really cold, though. Let me let me try to. I would normally try to uh, do some movement to warm up, but I'm uh, we're we're studying right now. So let's do this. The mind's eye scientifically known as the pineal or pineal gland, whatever you call it, is considered to be the gateway to higher levels of consciousness. In case you aren't aware, the pineal gland is a small pine cone, so maybe pine, pineal, pine cone, shaped endocrine gland in the brain that produces and secretes the hormone melatonin. It's also believed that the pineal gland is responsible for the release of dimethyltryptamine, which is DMT. It's also known in plant substances, like uh, there is some in shrooms. There is also some a lot in ayahuasca. So DMT, also known as the third eye. The pineal gland is believed to be the principal seat of the soul, according to Descartes. As you can see, this gland functions. No, this gland has many functions, both physical and metaphysical. So keeping it functioning at its full potential should be a priority of everyone seeking a healthy mind. As we age, the pineal gland begins to calcify and become sluggish. This rate varies considerably by the person and the lifestyle. But consuming excessive amounts of fluoride is considered to be a risk factor. This is partly because fluoride, which is a poison, collects in extremely high amounts in the pineal gland, causing faster cal calcification. And for those who do not know this, part of the ho Holocaust, um, part of the Holocaust programming and stuff was fluoride uh, for Hitler, for Hitler. And in the whole squad, we can't even just be mad at Hitler. There were many people that went along with that idea. It was a horrible idea. Fluoride can also decrease melatonin production. Two things we certainly don't want to happen. Research has shown that this calcification of the pineal shows a strong correlation in the developing of Alzheimer's disease. I've really been researching Alzheimer's and dementia because my grandfather's got it and I'm noticing my grandmother is much more forgetful. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with being overwhelmed, memory loss and trauma go hand in hand. And so I've been really studying also heavy metals that are in lots of our deodorants and in the things that that absorb into our body. People aren't going to like what I have to say. I already lost three subscribers just this morning. It's whatever. I really don't care. I don't care. 
The ones that are gathering and listening are the ones that are healing and open-minded. So we don't need their, if they don't like what I have to say, that's their, their problem. We'll say like Cindy G from Tennessee says, if you don't like what I have to say, there are a lot of other lovely teachers and readers. Go on over two aisles over and you'll find one that's for you. So if what I say doesn't resonate, not everybody's going to like it. I would much rather them exit stage left kindly and quietly than be rude. I don't like what everybody else has to say, so that's fine. All right, so fluoride, strong co correlation, calcifying the pineal gland and developing Alzheimer's. A poor diet laden with preservatives, chemicals, and pesticides are a major risk factor for calcification and premature aging as well. I really feel like I'm get uh, like I look younger the better I'm treating my body. What can we do to fight the aging process and the calcification of the pineal gland? Eating a healthy preservative chemical free diet that is rich in healthy fats should be a no brainer, pun intended. But what else can we do? Cut out the fluoride. While you're not likely to cut it out completely, you can drastically lower the levels you consume. You choose to consume. We choose what we put in our body. To do this, we should properly filter tap water before drinking, since many communities have water supplies that are teeming with fluoride, not to mention other things. Like I can smell the chlorine in the water when I would step outside of the house and the little waterfall that's going that we fill up with the hose. I can smell the chemicals in the water. Does water need to be filtered and stuff? Absolutely, but I don't think it needs all the chemicals in it. To achieve this, you need to use a reverse osmosis filter on your tap or by bottled water, which states that fluoride is not added, such as spring water. Spring water has natural vitamins and minerals in it, so that's a good one. You can also switch to fluoride-free toothpaste. This is not required since you technically do not consume it, but many natural types of toothpaste can help prevent tooth decay just as well as fluoride-based. Oh, great. This is going to be really good information. So, toothpaste still, I do want to add that when they talk about diseases and stuff in uh, the classes in prison, they would say anything you touch, like any porous things like the inside of, of your eyes absorb and your mouth. So using fluoride to pick toothpaste, you might not swallow it, but it still gets in your mouth for however long you're brushing your teeth. So keep that in mind. I like to brush my teeth for like two long minutes, very slowly in good spots. But I have a water pick that's an electric toothbrush. Take apple cider vinegar which I recently started taking, apple cider vinegar and um, cayenne pepper. I, I just follow my intuition on what herbs and minerals to guide, and, and I usually find out later that it's way better than I thought it was. Apple cider vinegar is rich in malic acid, making a great tonic to detoxify the whole body, including the pineal gland. Apple cider vinegar has a long list of benefits, that can help to make the body more alkaline, which is a good thing. It's a very good thing. Try drinking a tablespoon three times a day or adding it to lemon juice and honey. Sit back and reap the benefits. I've been advised by my Lakota Native American sister, a medicine woman healer, that if you're going to do apple cider vinegar, make sure you get the kind that has the goop in it, the mother, the cloudy stuff it's called. But I just take this apple cider vinegar um, pill. I do. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Okay, good idea. Absolutely. Our skin is very absorbent. Thank you so much for coming back. I lost a few this morning. Three unsubscribers for after I played Heal the World, but it's whatever. Some people aren't into the prayer and meditation. I talk about everything. So watch what you want to. Don't watch what you want to. But you people can kindly exit stage left and uh, not be rude. 
my daughter overdosed on heroin last night and somebody thumbs down my video. I think I left in, in a rush and it's whatever. It's whatever. I pray for them. All right. So let's go on here. Thank you so much for don't soak in the bath because I tend to do that every once in a while. Uh, but I make a salt scrub that I can use in the shower. So the water just runs off. Yes, I totally agree that our skin is highly absorbent. Absolutely it is. Everything we put on it, in it, in it, on it, in our temple. Our temple is of the divine spirit. So eat iodine-rich foods. Eat foods rich in iodine, such as seaweed and kelp. I'm going to have to look into some of that seaweed and kelp and maybe add one of those. Let, hold on. I got I to gotta take notes on this because I forget things. I walk away and then there will be a text or something to reply to, emails. Now I've got people emailing for information that one person never did about CBD oil to Australia. So I don't even know oh, what's going on. So it says other foods such as cranberries, green beans, kale, dark leafy greens, which is great. I've been doing my superfoods and greens. Okay. Through a straw. Oh, great. Thank you so much for that information. I will stop taking those that way. Jack Nabbit. I just lost my page. All right, here we are. Thank you so much, so much for sharing that with me. Because I'm new to the, the apple cider vinegar, but I'm so glad we're combining. Thank you so much for that. Um, uh, I'm talking and trying to write seaweed uh, so I don't forget to look that up. Um, green beans, kale, dark leafy greens, bananas, which I put one into my detox and superfood shake every night, every, almost every night I'm doing it shrimp and lobster are also rich in iodine thank you so much i almost 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 yes praise god for saving that one again because she's already out on the streets she said she's leaving she's mad at us for calling the ambulance i was like dude you were dead on the floor however and then i lost it broke down after they finally got her in the ambulance i just lost it i was in a state of panic I was yelling at the ambulance lady, the 911 lady and everything. I, I didn't mean to. I said, I'm sorry. However, this is a very short, incomplete list. And you can adjust to it, adjust it to meet your needs and lifestyle. See, I don't do shrimp. I don't do a lot of seafood. I really don't. I don't like the texture of shrimp or lobster. So I go for greens, but green beans, kale, spinach. Don't get the canned stuff that's loaded with preservatives at all. Thank you so much for the likes. So not everyone, not only does iodine support, support thyroid function, but it's also important for the pineal gland. Iodine helps to remove sodium fluoride from the body, which as I discussed it, above is very important. Oh, this is great to know. Great to know, iodine. I need to see my levels in my shake stuff now. All right, I have to start paying attention to this stuff and see if that's why I'm increasing so much because I'm really cutting lots of stuff out of my life. Iodine can be harmful in super high levels. So if you choose to use in supplement form, I would consider using a water soluble form such as. Losol, L-O-S-O-L, to avoid the risk of overdo overdoing it. Eat raw cacao, cacao, which is, is chocolate. Um, raw organic chocolate is rich in antioxidants. We talked about the benefits of dark chocolate the other day. Yes, it's absolutely bottled water. It's purified right now, but next time I buy water, I'm getting spring water. My intuition told me spring water. I was buying spring water um, straight from, you know, it's got vitamins and minerals in it. Yes, and they're BPA-free bottles. The place we have here is called Aldi, A-L-D-I. 
and it's derived from Germany. It's just now making it uh, to places on on the in the middle of the United States. It's not out west yet. But yes, I drink only bottled water at all. I have for years though. I don't like the taste of of city water at all. Thank you, thank you, alkaline and distilled. Thank you, Andrea. My Lakota sister said that spring has all the vitamins and minerals we need in it, though. So I'm, I kind of trying to switch it up a little. But yes, she said it depends what you're using it for. I should go back and look at what she said there, but I'm not going to do that right this second. She was telling me the, the, the differences, like she uses spring for certain things and distilled for certain things and whatnot. Okay, so chocolate, we talked about the benefits of dark chocolate in our superfoods that heal the other day. Um, raw organic chocolate is rich in antioxidants that fight free radicals and keep our brain healthy. This also helps stimulate the mind's eye and help detoxify. Besides, who doesn't love chocolate? I like chocolate. I like sweets. That's my biggest uh biggest problem is my biggest problem besides cigarettes right now eat coconut oil now that's what we make our cbd oil with um is coconut oil we soak it you have to bake it then you have to soak it in coconut oil and my mom even adds a little bit of raw honey oh my gosh oh my gosh Holy cow. Wow. I'll probably have to get a little major thing. That's very interesting to know. Oh my gosh. I think I'd start testing all three of them. Yes, I know it is. I know it is. I use bottled water on my on my uh, CBD plants back there. And I've even been told that coconut water has all the stuff that we need uh, the, the plants need in it all the vitamins and minerals like magnesium potassium all those great things coconut water is what i've really been told even for plants and we're talking about coconut oil right here so how funny is that coconut oil nourishes the whole body even the skin and hair but its greatest benefit is that it nourishes the brain and detoxifies the pineal gland Coconut oil is rich in medium chain triglycerides, which are converted to ketones in the liver. Oh, I will. I will. I actually got a life straw when the earthquakes were happening and I didn't know exactly when the big one was going to come. That way you can drink out of a pond if you need to. It's a filter instead of having to carry all those tons of bottled water. Yeah, I need a filter. That'll be my next purchase. Water filter. I also boil my um, my water for my instant coffee. I do instant coffee because I like mine stronger. My mom and I don't. It's easier for me to just do uh, each cup I want it and not waste anything. So I boil it, you know, in a hot pot that gets boiling and boils it out. But then you still have to clean it out and get minerals out every day. All right. Uh, not every day. Out of, out of the pot, I mean. All right. So coconut oil is so good for us. Converted into ketones in the liver. Ketones have been shown to restore neurons and nerve function in the brain. That is great news, especially if we all anybody took psychi psychotropics, any psych medications prescribed from a doctor, because it messes with our serotonin and our our our, our neurons, everything in the function in the brain. So coconut oil is great for that. Awesome. This is great news for reversing damage in the brain and may even provide breakthrough in Alzheimer's disease research. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. I, and we just got my 85-year-old grandfather taking the CBD oil. It's got coconut in oil in it. We are, do, this is going to be amazing. So try these herbs. I want to, I want to find out where uh, 
Taz Fulia went. I hope Taz Fulia didn't leave because I'll do anything I can to help people with anxiety and severe stuff going on that needs some CBD. But um, I told him to reach out to me on my email, which is the same as my channel title at Gmail. So that's how you can reach me and we can talk uh, not not on the public forum for addresses and if people want help. It's totally hemp, totally grown organically. I research these companies before I buy my stuff and make my stuff with it. And we try to use all, we're using all organic raw honey, love and prayers put over it and flavors. So it's beautiful. So try these herbs. Wow. Oh my gosh, this is going to be amazing. Gutu Cola. Go to G O T U Cola nourishes the whole brain and the pineal gland. Alfalfa sprouts and parsley both help to energize the pineal gland. All of these herbs and many others can help stimulate and detoxify the pineal gland. Try adding parsley and alfalfa sprouts generously when cooking for a mega brain boost. Stop wearing sunglasses. Did you catch? Did that catch your attention, it says? It caught mine. Well, let me explain. Light reflected by the retina stimulates the pineal gland. Do you want to know what's most insane? All our lives, we have been told not to look at the sun. We will go blind. I don't know if you guys have been told that, but I sure have. They even, we had an eclipse one time and they told us, don't look at it. We would go blind. And I believed him. I was in eighth grade, seventh grade. When I was drank a, a cup like this of ayahuasca and I was going through the thing after. No, it was after the first retreat and I was smoking DMT and doing so much that I could feel like it felt like uh, amazing stuff was going on in my body. I laid there and then let it. And I was still going through that thing. And I went outside in Nevada. It, where the sun is blazing and there's like no clouds. It's no wonder all the government research is there where the solar energy is so high. And they hardly ever have clouds or rain like five days a year. Okay. I went outside while I was at smoked like seven hits of DMT back to back. <sighs> Held it in and then just blew a little bit out and sucked some more oxygen. I did seven huge blasts just back to back. And this whole thing was coming over me. And I went straight outside and said, that's our source. And I just looked into the sun and my body wanted to reject it at first. It shocks you at first because it's so much. So this really just hit me. Stop wearing sunglasses. Did that catch your attention? Well, let me explain. And I look into the sun now. Light reflected by the retina stimulates the pineal gland. Our eyes need to be exposed to indirect sunlight on a daily basis. I'm not saying that I might not go blind later, but I it just felt like there's no other reason in the world that I would have thought to go look directly into the source of the sun right into my eyeballs. Photosensitive ganglion cells. Anyone is what it says. So if you do wear sunglasses, make sure you take a break, at least a short break from them daily. I'm not recommending everybody go stare into the sun by any means. I have no confirmation. I can still see great as a matter of fact, but I feel like energized. I have always loved laying out in the sun. I will bathe like a like my Leo moon, like a lion out in the sun and just sweat it out. Sweating is a great detox as well. It says right here, don't just stare at the sun, of course. Do I do it for a long time? Absolutely not. I just go out, absorb my, absorb, I call it absorbing energy, recharging. If it does it for crystals and stuff, we all need the sun. Just don't stare at the sun, of course. This also supplies us with vitamin D, which is super important for brain health and even helps to fight depression. You can even purchase full spectrum light bulbs. They're grow lights. Therapists use these kind of lights in their offices. Some of them do. 
there are um, like mood therapy lights. You can go stand in front of it. If you're in places where I'm at, where we get snow and the sun is gone, it's called seasonal affective disorder. You can call it seasonal depression, whatever you call it. So I'll take more vitamin D in the winter. But I really honestly used to um, even fake back in the, in the tanning booths and do that. So let's see, vitamin D which is super important for brain health and even helps to fight depression. You can even purchase full spectrum light bulbs to bring these benefits indoor year round. Of course, there are several other wonderful ways to promote the health of the mind's eye. So with that being said, this is by no means a complete list. It is always best to check with your doctor or herbalist. Especially if you have any health concerns, especially if you have diabetes, if you guys have any pre-existing stuff, take any information about fasting lightly, please. You cannot just cut things out of your life. It will shock many bodies. That's what's happening with, with my guy's mother who took out, took out sugar, carbs, cut alcohol, um, Xanax, Cymbalta. Vicodin, everything on at the same time. In shock. Your body's in shock. You can't do that. That's why they suggest tape on it. And I don't always talk about uh, specific people, but that amount of shockery to your body is, is shock. You cannot do that. I never advise anybody to cold turkey, uh, especially all of that at once. All right. So that was the end of that article. So let's go forth and nourish your third eye. I'm going to go over here real quick and open my folder about, um, I talked about at the end of my last video. So I have a playlist called Fasting Healing that contains the stuff that I learned from John St. Julian in Tanzania. He actually has been fighting with Lyme disease. And so the, the playlist of mine is called Fasting Healing. And there's several of his videos. I'm not going to go through them all. But the secrets of the pineal gland, the third eye, decalcifying your pineal gland is the one I watched and took screenshots of everything about Christ consciousness and what and how DMT is produced in our brain. My my goal right now is to teach us what what foods and stuff we can add to and remove from. The chemicals are a very important part of keeping us sick. Why so many keep, stay sick by eating um, preservatives, canned foods, all that extra sodium and all of that stuff that keeps it. We really don't know what's in all that crap. And it's our choice to put that stuff in our body. Our temple. That's our temple. Keep your third eye open, which is motmag.com. And decalcify your pineal gland of the endocrine system. Anyone who has been to a beginner's yoga class has th heard of the third eye. It is a term commonly used today. Yet few understand the importance it has on our health. The third eye is physically rooted in the pineal gland. The vital portion of the brain that activates our divine connection with spirituality and, and the spirit, the divine spiritual creator that is in each and every one of us. Learning how to activate that gland can work wonders for both mental and physical health of the endocrine system. I do want to say that after I awakened so shockingly to lots of this stuff, I hadn't dealt, I had suppressed trauma that came up. I wasn't prepared for it and I was alone and it was, it was a very hard healing process, especially after the fire and everything else. It just felt like whammy back to back of uh, suppressed trauma that came forward after I did so much DMT. It really brought up a lot of stuff that needed heal that came back to me in my dreams. I would wake up shocked and terrified. So I will say that you, we all need each other to guide each other through all of this. 
That's why most of my channel focuses on peace and meditating and healing. We balance things out. Life's about balance. Third eye basics. What is the pineal gland? The pineal gland is the most mysterious organs, one of the most mysterious organs in the human body. It's shaped like a small pine cone and located at the center of the brain and functions with the endocrine system. Because of its unique shape, the third eye is often depicted today as a pine cone. For example, vegan fashion brand Ministry of Tomorrow features a pine cone shaped emblem on all of their bags. The pineal gland is associated with production of melatonin, which we just talked about, which helps to regulate sleep and is also thought to play a role in the onset of puberty, has a metaphysical power, opening awareness and acting as a gateway to higher levels of consciousness. It's truly an incredible organ, organ, not organ, organ research into rats brains show the presence of DMT within the third eye region in the pineal gland. DMT dimethyltryptamine is known as the spirit molecule. You can watch that video. Look it up. I promise you. And can be taken as an illegal drug producing spiritual hallucin hallucinations. Now, let me tell you that Russia is the one who banned DMT worldwide back in the 60s, I do believe. Many believe DMT is also present in the human pineal glands, and some speculate that it's released both when we are it's released both when we are born and when we die. And we have the power to awaken it. We don't have to use drugs to do it. Have I done it? More than once. <laughs> it was, it's been so good, even just the combo, the Amazonian tree frog poison and the sweat lodge. Uh, it's been an amazing healing journey <laughs> it was a, a journey through hell for a while but uh I, i'm finally more balanced than ever in my life excuse me the pineal gland in humans has been shown to calcify in as many to 50 to 70 percent of adults but rarely in children below the age of 12. calcification causes a hard shell to form around the gland which can block all its functions and misalign the third eye chakra because the blood brain barrier barrier is very weak in the pineal gland fluoride accumulates to different degrees there adding to the problem this leads the pineal gland to not functioning naturally disrupting sleep cycles the history of the third eye and the pineal gland descartes Described, I think that's a philosopher, I'm not sure. Described the pineal gland as the scat of the soul, the seat of the soul. Positioned physically in eye, at eye level within the center of the brain corresponds this structure to the metaphysical third eye. The third eye or anja, A-J-N-A, anya is one of the chakras described in hinduism the ancient egyptians were also knowledgeable and we discovered some of this in our stage of time book if you're new here you should check out that folder for sure i read the whole book the stage of time it talks about all kinds of stuff and the egyptians and ancient symbols and all kinds of stuff it was great book it resonated so much stuff with us all right, hold on. The Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, were also knowledgeable about the pineal gland, and it is represented by the eye of Horus symbol. I just looked up my uh, Egyptian zodiac the other night because it'll tell you which one you are, which closely corresponds to the shape of the gland. The third eye of the pineal gland is believed to be responsible for our connection to divine sight. Absolutely. And higher consciousness connectivity to God and the universe. A calcified pineal gland interrupts this connectivity, causing metaphysical blocks in the third eye. So this one it goes even deeper. 
Why should we decalcify and activate our pineal gland? The exact job of the pineal is debatable. However, studies have shown that calcification can impact melatonin production and disrupt the sleep-wake sleep cycle. In addition to physical symptoms, other energies may be affected and controlled by the health and activation status of the pineal gland as it corresponds to the third eye chakra. The pineal gland is believed to act as a gateway to higher levels of consciousness by many metaphysical practitioners. Access to parts of our consciousness, which are not normally available, such as senses, which extend beyond our first five, and the ability to perceive information across subtle energetic levels are all thought to be related to the pineal glands and its activation. Now, this is exactly what John St. Julian showed in his stuff. That is the pineal gland and fluoride deposits on it. it says fluoride is deposited here as a result of consumption of fluoridated water. Not just consumption, just as Earth Dog said. We get it also in our bodies. Our bodies, our skin is highly absorbent. Our, our, our temple absorbs energy in the air, period. So you think stuff touching our skin isn't going to get in our body? Absolutely it will. I've gone to all natural hygiene products for sure. Calcification of the pineal gland is known to be worsened by the addiction of synthetic fluoride to the water in areas such as the USA and the UK. Imagine that they would choose those two places. <laughs> as well as modern chemicals and toxins in processed foods. Fluoride supplementation has even been found to have a negative impact on the IQs of children who live in flyly, highly fluoride, fluoridated areas. It even impacts their IQ level of children. Combating the potential classification of the pineal gland, as well as opening it to the more subtle energies which may have the ability to respond to can be helped by eating de decalcifying foods alongside medica meditation practice, not medication, meditation. So reverse osmosis filter. I'm sorry, I, I had to write that down. I'm going to buy a water filter. Meditation to soften and visualize the activation of the pineal gland may help to reconnect us to this mysterious organ. In addition, oh great news, in addition certain foods help to decalcify and activate it. Oregano oil, and we talked about this in our superfoods the other day, just a couple days ago, it might have been yesterday. Oregano oil helps to fortify the endocrine or hormone system, which the pineal gland is a part of. It's also a natural way to help cleanse and restore harmony to the body by supporting the immune system. I started taking that about three weeks ago. Iodine, because many people cut out salt from their diets, they don't get its beneficial action in helping to remove synthetic fluoride from the body via the urine. Eating foods rich in natural iodine, which we talked, sea, seaweed and other things from the other one. Oh, flax seed. In addition, it's important not to starve the body of healthy calcium. To stock up on natural calcium by eating foods such as flax seed, sesame seed, kale, broccoli, and almonds. And I'm sure I'm getting a lot of that in my amazing grass detox and digest. Raw apple cider vinegar. Thank you so much for sharing that one, Earth Dog. I don't know who's still in here. It just shows one right this moment. Apple cider vinegar can help the body to detoxify and combat the effects of calcification. It contains malic acid, which is thought to help soften calcification. Foods high in boron. Boric acid is known to directly combat the effects of fluoride in the body. Boron, oh great, I've been naturally led to start eating avocados a lot lately. Boron 
Boric acid is known to be to directly combat the effects of fluoride in the body. Boron can be naturally found, natu found naturally occurring in foods such as avocados, almonds, dates, prunes, and raisins. Well, I do eat almonds and avocados in my little snacking when I do my shake. I get simply organic stuff from the Aldi store. Dang it, the phone tilted and it lost my where I was. So hold on, where I was. Boron iodine. Now, alkaline forming foods. So as Andrea said, alkaline water. Great. We're all, it's all coming together, huh? Foods which are alkaline forming rather than acid forming can help to decalcify the pineal gland because they allow the body to absorb nutrients without using up energy to combat blood imbalances caused by too much acid. Foods which are alkaline forming include celery, chives, cucumber, dandelions, garlic, I take garlic oil too, kale, kelp, leeks, lettuce, Mushrooms, that's part of one of my juices. It's got a um, mushroom, it's a, ju uh, a grass and mushrooms, superfoods. Okra, olives, onions, parsnips, peppers, pumpkin. Tis the season for pumpkin, <sighs> depending where you are. Radish, rhubarb, spinach, sweet potatoes, Swiss chard, turnips, watercress, wheat grass, yams and zucchini ensuring the water you drink is either filtered tap water or bottled mineral mineral water will also is also vital to help stop the process of calcification in the pineal gland switching to a non-fluoride toothpaste is also useful choosing organic food supplements which support the endocrine system i use all vegan supplements and minerals vitamins and minerals multivitamin multi-mineral stuff which support the endocrine system and combating this with metaphysical awareness through regular meditation practice is the best way forward when activating and decalcifying the pineal gland as with many areas which means you must detach from social media and watching videos and and center and go within for the mind body spirit connection to take control the unification as with many areas the unification of the mind body and a holistic approach will lead to greater positive change and in insight so there is a video at the bottom of this and i'll put the links in it after it closes up and uploads uh the secrets of the pineal gland there's a youtube video at the bottom you can choose to i've watched plenty of this i know i'm learning about the foods studying the foods more now so it didn't really say this one i'm not going to read the whole thing but it is scottjeffrey.com how to decalcify your pineal gland and why it's really important for higher mental performance it's going to say it's only the size of a grain of rice tiny gland places an essential role in how we sleep perform, make decisions, and perceive reality. It has tons to do with psycho a high, healthy functioning pineal is essential for psychological development, peak performance, and spiritual awakening. So I'm not going to read all of that. You can, you can read this. I'll put it in the links below. Please share this with anybody you know that needs all of this information. I am going to go now to talk about fasting and how that helps awaken as we're detoxing all of the stuff out of our body right and we're starting to add the good things in fasting is a very good way but you don't have to actually cut all food it's very important that you still get your vitamins and minerals you still maintain your health you can still be strong i i, I don't know I, I know and I've researched a lot about people who do dry fast. John St. Julian uh, tracked, uh, I want to say it was 14 days into and no water and no food. I even have seen tarot card readers doing it. And um, 
we can be strengthened through it. I do a lot of intermittent fasting. I usually have a two or three hour window that I eat in in the evening. So uh, from usually 930 at night until about six or seven at night. The next night I, I go uh, without food. I'm taming my flesh very thoroughly. But I first started practicing fasting in prison. I asked God after reading this that I'm going to read Matthew 4. And Moses fasted. Lots of the prophets, lots of the greatest messengers and people of the Bible fasted. Even the book of Esther declared a three-day fast when the Jews were being killed. If you haven't read the book of Esther, it's a great book. I don't use all biblical, but it was these scriptures that guided me to ask God, the divine spirit, the universe. Um, if I needed to know more about fasting, please provide me with some more information. Next time I went to the library, right there on a the shelf, I wasn't even looking for it, was an entire book on fasting. So I studied it very thoroughly and I started fasting. I gave up one meal. I did it just like they told me to, baby steps. They say if you're diabetic, you cannot just go without food at all. You have to, everybody, every body, everybody is different. I tend to faint when I don't eat at all. I am so highly sensitive that I totally drop and crack my head on things. Been doing it my whole life. When I starved myself in high school for being made fun of for being fat my whole life. So, let's talk about Matthew 4. It says, Baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Oh my gosh, hold on. That's in John the Baptist 3, Matthew 3. So that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But the Spirit is poured upon us. I read about that yesterday in Joel 2, 28. Breathe right into us. We're talking about fasting right now and how I got led to fasting and how it awakens your spiritual contact with the divine. It's already been poured upon many. I see highly intuitives, all walks of life in all different areas. Everybody God and everybody, we got to heal and do our inner work. So I've already been talking about the foods that help. I'm going to put the links below. But I was first started fasting and stuff in, in prison. I did a three day uh, liquid only fast. I did not cut my coffee because I didn't want the withdrawal headaches. So and it also helps curb my appetite. So anyway, Jesus went and was led to. So after his baptism of the fire and whatever he was led to and guided by hello hello oh great awesome so yes you can share with us too i'm going to read about the the and and then we'll talk as soon as I, i'm done with this little it's not very long of a chapter jesus was led and body guided by the holy spirit into the wilderness after after it says after he was baptized he was baptized and came out of the water and the spirit of God descended like a dove and a lining on him. Then he went into the wilderness for 40 nights and, and 40 days before all of the resurrection, before he went preaching, all of that stuff. He went and had a talk with God, his father, as he called him. When Jesus was led and guided by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, the desert, to be tempted, tested and tried by the devil. That this temptation and it's a lot of times our inner voice and a lot of influences. It's like our mind with the Totec called him a Tote. He went without food for 40 days and 40 nights and later he was hungry. And when he went without food. Oh, I already read that. And if the and then the tempter. So whatever temptation, it's not the devil isn't some one supreme being that has any control over anything. Really, if you know how to, to go against all of that stuff. So the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made loaves of bread. And Jesus replied, it's been written, man shall not live on bread alone, but by the, but hold on, man shall not live and be upheld this is the Amplified Bible, so it gives a bigger description. And suspended by bread alone, sustained. 
but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Now we're all divine. Oh yes. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. I need to go walk my dog too. I will. He's laying on the bed and he just looked at me when I said that. So I do too. But I'm going to do this. I would love you to leave some stuff in the comments below for everybody to see. I don't know that everybody knows how to use the live chat and have it pull up. I've got some elderly people that even watch some of my stuff. And I don't know that they know to click that. So if there's never any comments below any of my videos, people might not ever see some of that stuff. And there's really good clues in there. Thank you so much for sharing your, your wisdom and knowledge. We are going to get so powerful together. We are going to come back and, and start a love revolution. And so Jesus quoted Deuteronomy 8.3 to that tricky little devil in the, in the wilderness. And the devil took him into the holy city and placed him on a turret, a pinnacle, a gavel of the temple sanctuary. It says Nehemiah 11.1 1 and Daniel 9.24. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it's written. I will give his angels charge over you and they will bear up you on their hands. Lest you strike your foot against a stone. That's my Psalm 91 or Psalm 91 umbrella of protection. So see, it says even here that when we're tempted, our tempters, the people, the tricksters, whatever. These are real beings. There's an empire of highly confused brainwashed people. That are also, that also know scripture. Absolutely, they sure do. I got attacked by them yesterday. Called harlotry and said they were going to expose my whole channel and my harlotry. I don't even hardly ever talk about sex and nothing like that. That's crazy for somebody to say that. Haters. So Jesus said to them, on the other hand, it is written also. You shall not tempt, test thoroughly, or try exceedingly. Test the Lord your God. That's Deuteronomy 16. So every time that tricky little devil would speak scripture, the temptation, and I often say that the enemy is in me. If I don't allow them to trick me and pull me into reacting to them, then, then I've won. I've won. So I just block people like that. Um, you're done. You're cut off. I don't handle all that hate and stuff. So again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory and the splendor and magnificent free eminence and excellence of them. And he said to them, these things all taken together, I will give to you if you will prostrate yourself before me and and do homage and worship me. So if you want to worship the wrong way. The, not that it's right or wrong. The dark side. The whatever. A lot of people call it satanic and demonic. And whatever. If we're not working in the realm of love. Then it, it's, it's, it's dark spirits. Depression. All of that stuff. I have a video that talks about mental illness. And the, and the dark spirits. And how they even relate to biblical times. And depression is the life-sucking boa constrictor that, that people kill themselves over. So, when Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, <laughs> for it has been written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. I'm talking about worshiping the spirit in you, around you, loving nature, loving life, loving the animals, even the pesky bugs. <laughs> so, the devil departed from him. And behold, angels came and ministered to him. So there's another scripture that talks about fasting. And when you fast, don't be like, oh, I'm fasting. Woe is me. Like, don't be like the hypocrites. It says, I don't know where that one's at. But um, we had a really good talk about the pineal gland and DMT and awakening the spirit within us. So I'll end off with this mind, body, and spirit. I do want to start talking about this more uh, so that we can all heal together. And it's a funny picture in the background about children at school. There's obviously an American flag, so it's it's in America. There's ooh, 
Look at that. There's even planes. This is old, too. Flying on a building. I got this at a um, garage sale. And there's holding the light right there. This lady. It's not the Statue of Liberty, but she's got a white gown on. Farmland. Planes, what looks to me almost like Twin Tower uh, stuff. So... It says this picture represents the spirit of education presiding over the guidance and direction and the enlightenment of children and youth into maturity. And we've all been wrongly programmed by our schools. I mean, all over the world. Many children are so badly doctrinated that they come attack me, even adult children. So that they may take their dignified and honorable places in the world of human affairs agriculture, industry, commerce, and professions, and arts. Our spirit moves us ever forward to attain success. In the center of the picture, you will see a representation of the spirit of life, carrying the torch of enlightenment. Our spirit pushes us along the way, even against difficulty or opposition. There are three sides of life. All should be working together. We must have some of each. It is everyone's desire to succeed. Our minds and bodies are bathed in the light from the torch of our spirit. On the right is a group of children studying with their teacher. About them are their books and a globe, the world. These signify learning. Mind is that part of man which thinks, feels, and wills as contrasted with the body. We have to heal all of our mind, body, and soul, our emotional body, inner childhood wounds. Absolutely, we have to do this shadow work. We have to quit running from the pain. And that's what we're talking about in One Day My Soul Just Opened Up Now. Is honoring our feelings. All right. So, on the left is a group representing physical development. Body growth is, an, is a part of our spirit and mind. In the background on the right, we see a farm. This represents life in the country. On the left, we see modern city with its Nash, with, with its radio towers. I don't know why I said Nash. Airplanes and office, office buildings and factories. Thus, we get a full life, spirit, mind, and body all healing together. So, yeah, I showed them like working out and my little quote that's on my dresser that i tore out of a magazine in prison says oops working out is definitely an emotional experience you're powering through something that makes you a better human being when you start to feel good enough to do even simple things people who are not in the best physical health right now and and i'm getting when you when you're a healer you get people who are at all different stages I'm to the point where I can run. I can do Pilates straight up on my side. Not everybody is that strong yet, right? That's why we're working together. So even simple things like yoga for those who aren't physically capable yet, you can even sit and do simple stretches. I still, I got seven Facebook accounts hacked. I'm not even kidding you at all. So I opened a Twitter and I opened my own YouTube channel. It wasn't hacked. They were stolen for exposing too much government stuff. So I, I literally I had seven accounts stolen from me. And so that's why I'm much wiser with my words and don't. I do like one video and touch on all the crazy stuff going on in the world. And then we center balance heal, center balance heal. Okay. I don't, but other people definitely could because I definitely don't facebook anymore and in detaching from that and not being okay all right i if i ever get back on i will but i'm telling you being able to detach from that much social media oh good is 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 has been an amazing transformation but they don't like what i have to say so i have to be wise with my words when we talk about all kinds of exposing the truth about things. They don't want the truth to get out. They don't want everybody to know what I know is really going on in the world. That's why I put trigger warnings and all of that. Okay. Well, if other people have Facebook now, you guys can unite and join each other. Because I know there are others. 
awesome. Awesome, because they sure the heck didn't like what I said. I went live all the time on Facebook. And I waited two months after losing six accounts and uh, got another one going. And they stole that sucker for, yeah, so did I. You see, it hit that. I, I, I used to go in his comments. I used to go in his comments. It won't let me show that. Is that showing? Why is that doing that? It said, I even called him Fuckerberg too. Yes, I did. I went straight in his comments and told him about a lot of stuff because they put me in Facebook jail. Left him right. I was for showing little African children his ribs because I was advocating for those 33 little orphans in Africa, in Uganda, to get people. And somebody did set up a GoFundMe. I was screaming and feed the children. That man had 33. Oh, great. Awesome. I've been sharing mine to Twitter, and I know some people are seeing them, but I don't do that. Well, that's awesome, because I used to get put in time out for sharing too fast. For sharing too fast. Right. Facebook jail. My iPhone shared too fast. And they would say, oh, it looks like you're moving too fast. I said, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, real jail. Facebook jail was even like more of a herder because I couldn't talk to anybody. I couldn't leave comments and in groups. I couldn't even speak. I was like, oh my gosh, I would tell Zuckerberg, Fuckerberg, freedom of speech in America is not so free. That it, they wouldn't let me respond to comments. I'd have to wait a whole week. It was irritating. It was pissing me off. And I nearly quit after the sixth account. Oh, I know. I know it all goes through a program that's artificial. There's people that have to start writing stuff down and holding up a sign. Yes, her name is Dana Ashley. You should add her. D-A-N-A -A space A-S-H-L-I. She's got a YouTube channel. And I talked about it yesterday in the video when we talked about quakes and all of that stuff. And it's one of the videos might be under America the Beast in my folder entitled America the Beast. It talks about that, actually. Hold on, I'm really looking for it because that's a great video to find out some more about uh, geoengineering and what they really put in the air. It freaked me out. Please don't watch it before you go to bed. Please don't watch it before you go to bed. Anyway, that does talk about. The delusion, the strong, oh, brainwashing, that one, that one can, has a lot of good stuff. The AI, strong delusion, MK Ultra, Lyme disease. Um, this is Dana Ashley that I'm talking about right here. A solution they do not want you to know. And part of it is, is boron. So we just talked about that. So I'm going to look into that. I'm going to I'm going to get off here and uh, you guys have a blessed and beautiful day. I send you all my love and light. I also receive all your love and light for me, my family and my kiddo who is suffering. I almost lost my kid. I think he came in late. My kid, I almost lost her. Overdosed on heroin last night. Found her blue on the floor, not breathing at all. It was an emergency. I had to go. It was the end of the video called uh together we can we can do stuff so thank you so much i love you all so much and i thank you for your support have a blessed and beautiful day don't forget to stay shining we'll be back um later today to do uh again one day my soul just opened up and where we honor our feelings now we're on uh oh yes i'm so sorry to hear that yep yep almost lost that one last night scared the shit right out of me talk about a breakdown and you get angry because and so yesterday we talked about honor our feelings i was terrified so we were all reacting in anger to each other my child didn't care she was mad that we called the freaking ambulance and the cops went in her room so whatever you guys have a blessed and beautiful night and i thank you we send love to all those addicts out there still suffering send them abundant love and just touch them in a way that they've never been touched so they can heal all of their pain that's keeping them sick and using in the mighty power of Christ, in the name of Christ, amen. I'll be back after a little while. I love you so much. Thank you so much. Received. Thank you so much. Got my receiving hand up.
Thank you all so much. I love you so much. Let's let's deal the whole world in love. Amen.